Fire, uh, water is a situation trying to overwhelm you. Fire, that thing's trying to consume you. That thing is trying to consume you. He said, when you go through the fire, though, my presence, I got you. They looked down and said, I thought we cast three of them in there. My Lord, the fourth one to be in there right with you. Come on and read, brother. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Come on and read. For I am the Lord thy God. I am the Lord thy God. The Holy One of Israel. Yes. Thy Savior. Yes. I gave Egypt for thy ransom. Come on. You know what it took for me to get you. Come on and read. Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Yes. Since thou wast precious in my sight. Uh-huh. Thou hast been honorable. Mm -hmm. And I have loved thee. Uh-huh. Therefore will I give men for thee. Come on. And people for thy life. Yes. Fear not. Don't you fear not. I mean, don't you fear anything. Read. For I am with thee. For, what? For I am with thee. When God is with you, he'll bring you through the fire and the flood. Amen. When God is with you, he will bring, when his presence is with you, that situation is not, not going to drown you. And it will not burn you up. Go to Mark 4, 35. Real quick, Jesus with the uh, storm. We will face storms in life. But when God's presence is with us in the middle of the storm, our nation is facing a storm right now. And I was thinking earlier in the office, and I said, you know what? God is speaking. I'll never remember a time in life where they shut down. March Madness? You serious? You know how many people bet in, on campuses and everywhere else? I ain't never seen them shut LeBron down. Hallelujah! God said, "Y'all want to? Y'all want a whole oh, oh, oh. hey, a little, just a little old flu type thing? Come, come on, shut China down, Italy down. Well, we're America. I don't care. America's a great. I don't care what you think. I shut it down. I pray, Amen." And my prayer is, why God is shutting stuff down, my God, that they will take enough time to listen to him. Amen. Hey, that needs to be our prayer, amen. Why they got this time on your hand, why you sitting down for 14 days, why you can't turn on ESPN and say the same thing over, you ain't got nothing to report, ESPN, turn on Jesus, amen. amen. That needs to be our prayer, amen. Grammy, shut you down. Oscar, shut you down. My God, keep going. Shut you down, my God. That, amen. That's our prayer, amen. Keep shutting stuff down. And Lord, we gonna work. We ain't got nothing to worry about. His presence is with us. Our bills gonna be paid. Amen. We're not gonna starve. Amen. God is with us. Thank the Lord, amen. They may fear. They may go crazy, my God. Why? Because they don't understand what the presence of God is about. That's what he's talking about. Do my assignment. You ain't got nothing to worry about. This is what he was talking about when he said, when you go going into all the world, he said, if you take up a scorpion, this and that, it shall not harm you, so on and so forth. Many times when they would go, they would have to create fires. And inside the fires would be these little scorpions, these little things. One of them bit Paul later on. What he was saying is, when you're going through this thing, he wasn't talking about this back alley Virginia people that take up these serpents and getting bit and everything else. No, I man, you're tempting God. That ain't, that ain't, yeah, I didn't want to talk about that. If you take up serpent, that wasn't what he was talking about. Live right. He's talking about if you're going through your daily affairs of life and the conditions of this world while you're doing God's business, come up, my God. You ain't got to worry about it. Now, if you're doing your own thing, you out there to say the other, you're on your own. But as long as you are, it's, the Bible said the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. God got us. Amen. We got faith. Come on and read, my friend. I mean, sis. But without a parable, yes. spake he not unto them. Uh -huh. And when they were alone, yes. he expounded all things to his disciples. Come on, read. And the same day, when the evening was come, yes. he saith unto them, uh -huh. Let us pass over into the other side. My Lord. And when they had sent away the multitude, yes. they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. Yes. And there arose a great storm of wind. Uh huh. And the waves beat unto the ship. My Lord. So that it was now full. My Lord. And he was in the hinder part of the ship. Now those little ships, you don't hear no more about those. My Lord. They were out there without Christ. You don't read no more about the little ships. Even the big ship that they had was filled up. Come on and read. And he was in the hinder part of the ship. Yes. Asleep on a pillow. My Lord. And they awake him and say unto him, uh -huh. Master, carest now 
carest thou not that we perish? My Lord. And he arose and rebuked the wind, and he said unto the sea, My Lord. Peace, be still. My, my. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Uh-huh. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Hold on. You said, Brother Lee, how do you know they have no faith? He said, because I looked in the eyes. He said, you can't have faith and fear. They can't, they don't coexist. You can't have faith and fear. He said, look in the eyes. Now, there's reason. There's taking proper precautions. There's all these things that are proper. But fear is different. That's different. Fear represents that I'm more concerned with what I'm facing than who's with me. So here, going through the storm, he said, peace. When he's with you, you might go through a storm, but he's going to say, peace, be still. You say, brotherly, how do you know that? If you read the first verse she read, verse 12, he said, let us go to the other side. Once he say something, once he, I don't care what you face. I don't care what, I ain't read that. Oh, read verse 12. I'm sorry, you got to read this. Read. I think verse 35. Uh, verse and 35. The, and the same day when the evening was come, yes. he saith unto them, yes. let us pass over unto the other side. It's over. It's over. Once he said, it's over. His word is forever set on the heaven. Once he give you a word, it don't care what storms come. It don't care what winds blow. When you are standing on the word. He said, we're going to the other side. And you're going. And you're going. And you're going, my God. When he says something, and you have the faith to hold on to that, my God, then he will do whatever it takes to bring you to the other side. As we close out, the Ark of the Covenant was imperative for Israel to keep with them. They had to keep the Ark with them. The Ark represented the presence of God. Go over to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel, chapter 4, verse 8. When he's with you, even the storms, the storms of life, peace be still. The winds may blow, but when God's presence is there, family, come on in here. Sit down. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. That's what my parents always, anytime there's a situation, that's what they talk. Pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. There's a situation we're facing, we're going to pray about it. And God, every time, peace be still. Peace be still. When God's presence is with you, he'll even calm the storms of your life. 1 Samuel 4, verse 8. <clears throat> Woe unto us. Uh -huh. Who shall deliver us out of the hand of these mighty gods? My Lord. These are the gods that smote the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. Come on and read. Be strong. I'm sorry, go back uh, to verse number one. And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Uh -huh. Now Israel went out against the Philistines mm -hmm. to battle. My Lord. And pitched beside Ebenezer. Uh -huh. And the Philistines pitched in Apek. Come on. And the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel. My Lord. And when they joined battle, uh -huh. Israel was smitten before the Philistines. My Lord. And Israel they, were God's people. The Philistines were the opposers. But they slew the army of the army, 4,000 men. Verse 3. And when the people were come into the camp, the elders of Israel said, Wherefore hath the Lord smitten us today before the Philistines? Uh -huh. Let us fetch the Ark of the Covenant. Let us do what? Let us fetch the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was the presence of God, represented the presence of God between the mercy seat, the cherubims there. <coughs> Here they went, and the Philistines destroyed them. And they said, hold on, we lose in battles. All God's people do is win. 
my Lord, my Lord. That's all we do is win, bro. That's all we, we just win. You may say, no, but Lee, Joseph didn't win. Joseph's brother sold him because he had a coat of many colors. He was winning with that coat of many colors. His brother sold him down to slavery, and the man named Potiphar bought him. Yeah, you right. They sold him down to Potiphar, but when he got there, all he did was win. <laughs> Potiphar exalted him, exalted him, but then Potiphar's wife came in, though, but Lee, amen, and said that he was trying to get with her. Amen. They went through her and ended up selling down to slavery down in Egypt, my God. Yeah, you right. He went down to Egypt, amen, my God, but when he got to Egypt, all he did was win. But then, but Lee, no, he went to prison. You right, he did go to prison, my God, but thank God there were some dreams that needed to be interpreted. My God, amen, and when he interpreted those dreams, amen, the keeper of the prison made him assistant warden. My God, he went to prison. All he did was win. Send him to prison. We're going to win. We just win, win, win. Hold on, but Lee, but then they came and brought him up out of Egypt, so he went down there. You right, and he got exalted to the assistant prime minister of the whole Egyptian uh, empire, my God. All we do is win, my God. His brothers came up and said, hold on, we need some help. We starving down here. We need some help, my God. Oh, oh, it's, it's Joseph. It's Joseph. So he, we did Joseph so wrong. We did him so wrong. We in trouble. Oh, he did. And Joseph said, listen, you don't, I'm not going to get upset at you trying to throw my name under the bus, trying to dog me out, posting stuff, saying this, calling people, calling this one, that one, trying to dog. Listen, all we do is win. Once we stay right, all we do is win. Amen. What you meant for bad, amen, God meant for good. Oh, man. See those folk down there, all they do is go to church. They talk about they live right. They talk about this. You go down there, amen, they don't believe in no drinking, smoking. They don't mean no premarital sex. They don't mean, you know what? Don't go there. Don't go there. Hold on. Don't go there. That's what I've been looking for. Thank the Lord. You promoting us, my God. You're not dogging us out. All they do is live like Christ all the time. They don't curse people out. They don't listen to the young Jeezy and all this un ungodly meal. They don't watch ungodly stuff. They don't go to my God because the Bible said I will set no wicked thing before my eye. They don't listen to Eddie Murphy. My God, they don't, my God, uh, uh, go to this movie and that would murder this and murder that. They don't, that's exactly what I wanted. My God, a people on earth, amen, that are yet living right, that can get a prayer through, my God. If I wanted to stay in sin, I would have stayed in sin. I want to get saved, my God. I want my life transformed. I want to get delivered, my God. If there's a people that's teaching holiness, thank God the Bible said upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. Why? Because there's holiness there. You fighting us because we teach holiness. Holiness teaching is what's needed to get the deliverance. If you take out the holy teachings, you take out the deliverance. You're going to have a choir full of sinners, my God. The Bible said, you, my God, have he quickened who were dead. Amen. They was in sin. They used to get high, but they got saved, amen, and sin is behind them. My God, we go forward now. All you do is win. All you do is win, my God. So here, they had the ark, and they lost. I'm sorry. They, they were the people of God. They left the ark. And they lost. Keep the ark in the camp, saints. The law was inside the ark. Don't change the doctrine. I don't care who try to come up in here and try to add, subtract, do whatever. Don't change it. Don't rearrange it. I love it like it is. Why? Because that represents the power of God. If we keep it tight, if we keep it right, amen, we can get a prayer through. We can have power, miracles, glory, salvation, my God. Families put back together. But there was one point that we got to hit. Skip down to verse number eight. Read. Woe unto us. Woe unto us. Who shall deliver us out of the hand of these mighty gods? The other armies heard that the ark was back in the camp. They said, man, we in trouble. Yeah. Come on and read. These are the gods that smote the Egyptians. Yes. All the plagues in the wilderness. See, the devil keep track record on you. <laughs> hey, man, he knew about your reputation. The man, those are the gods. When they was bound by cigarettes, they were smoking all this other stuff. They ain't done that in 25 years. They delivered. That's, those are gods that deliver. She used to go mad. She used to cuss people out. I mean, she would cuss you out. I mean, left and right out. She had a whole nother vocabulary. She had a vocabulary. I mean, for real. She ain't, we ain't heard her talk like that in 25 years. Those are the gods that deliver out of Egypt. Amen. And when they came through the Red Sea, the Egyptians was behind them, which represents spirits. But it said, after they came through the Red Sea, the blood of the Lamb, after they came through the Red Sea, the blood of the Lamb, after they came through, it said, none of them was left. Not one made it through. When you really get saved, when you really get delivered, not one of those spirits make it on the other side. I used to smoke. I used to get high. I used to cuss. But something happened. So here, 
they had the ark there and the enemy said man these are the folk that got saved let's see what happened no read be strong be strong and quit yourselves like men they said don't be afraid though y'all we still got to fight these people even though they got the ark back Read. Oh, ye Philistines, yes. that ye be not servants unto the Hebrews, yes. as they have been to you. Come on. Quit yourselves like men Come and on, fight. Come on, they're going to make you slaves as you were to them. Read. And the Philistines fought. Yes. And Israel was smitten. Uh-huh. And they fled every uh -huh. man into his tent. What? Read. And there was a very great slaughter. Read. For there fell off Israel 30,000 footmen. Whoa. They got the ark back. But Lee, you said the ark represents the presence of God. They got the ark back and they lost 30,000. Oh, but you got to understand. It's not just about religiosity, but you got to get right with God. See, if you read the chapter before, the verse chapter before, it said that Eli came to Samuel and said, there was no vision. This was the time people doing what they wanted to do. Matter of fact, the priest's son yeah. He didn't restrain them. They was doing some stuff, female, in the church. He letting them do what they want to do. Oh, that's my son. Let him, your son running through girls at the church and you going to got him up doing what? Please, what? what? See, whoa, whoa, what? Are you for real? And he didn't restrain them. So then they said, hold on, we need help. Go get the ark. So they got the ark, bought it back. Okay, we got the ark, y'all, we good. But you don't read where... They repented. See, when times when Israel got the favor back, they sackcloth, ashes. We sorry. We messed up. So here what happened was it was some folk that needed help. And they tried to just go join church. They tried to just put some church stuff on top of they sinful stuff on Friday night. Oh, y'all seeing this, saints? They tried to come and shake a preacher's hand and say, Whoa, I got the Holy Ghost. Oh, I got the Holy Ghost. 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 But they left there and slept in the same bed they did the night before with the same person that they were married to. They didn't get right with God. They tried to just bring the ark back and have God. God don't bless over mess. You can get all you want. Read your Bible. Read my Bible. It ain't enough to just read your Bible. I'm singing some here. I'm coming to church on Sunday. I appreciate you doing all that. But what you got to do is get right with God. Light has no fellowship with darkness. Don't you let a false prophet tell you you can still do your sinful stuff in the presence of God be there. Light has no fellowship with darkness. When Eve and Adam, my God, was in the garden, they, my God, committed one sin. God said, my presence can't be here with you. You got to go or I got to go, and I ain't going nowhere. So here this morning, there are some that need the presence of God. But you got to humble yourself and say, Lord, I need at this phase of my life, I need your presence. But there's some things in my life that's not right. And I got to deal with them. Matter of fact, even the church, it ain't about the preaching. The it's the presence of God. You read over in Revelation, the first letter he wrote, Ephesus. He said, man, I love y'all can't bore those evil, this that, and the other. He said, but he said, you left your first love. He said, man, y'all, you know, y'all going, going through the motions. Y'all have a devotion. Y'all firing. He said, listen, repent. Get right. Or I'm coming back. See, it said, I am he that walks through the seven candlesticks. Seven, the candlestick represented the presence of God. He said, if you don't get right, the mercy of God, I'm identify. You know better than what you're doing. You're not doing some stuff that you should be doing, and you're doing some stuff you shouldn't be doing. Now, I'm dealing with you in mercy, and I'm giving you a space. It's been a while since you really even felt me, because you grieved me so badly. Some things you're doing is just grieving me. You know better than what you're doing. Yes, you come in the church. Yes, I'm in mercy answering some of your prayers. In mercy, I'm still giving you a little tug every now and then. But I'm letting you know that I need you to have your first love. I need to be priority in your life. I need to fervor that you used to have. Nobody like lukewarm nothing. Give me a hot drink or a cold drink. I don't want nothing lukewarm. I don't want no lukewarm relationship.
relationship. He said, I'm giving you a space. He said, but if I come back, I'm taking the candlestick. I'm taking I'm sorry. You can preach all you want to preach. You can sing all you want to sing. If the presence of God, you ain't getting nobody free. You're really saved. You ain't going to get nobody really healed. You ain't going to get nobody might got to see in the church. You ain't going to see nobody going to that next level. You ain't going to see saints growing. Saints trusting God. God performing. No, 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 no. It's the presence of God that produces those that aren't saved this morning. The things you're dealing with in life. The presence of God is what you're lacking. Don't sit there and say, I got to deal with this. I got to deal with that. How am I going to deal with this? Don't worry about it. The presence of God will deal with all those. All those. But you can't come halfway. You can't just try to add church on. You got to deal with the things and humble yourself and say, God, there's some things that I've been doing that you can't abide with. I'm asking you to forgive me. I'm sorry, God. I've been sinning against you. I'm humbling myself. What do people look at me? If they look at me, if they don't, you know how I lived. You know the decisions I made. I'm owning it. I'm owning it, Lord. And I believe that there are some here today that if they unleash God in their life right now, I believe God will come in, begin to bless, begin to strengthen, begin to bring from here, bring from there. And I believe he'll restore the years that the locust hath eaten. The presence of God. Shall we stand?